One is a centuries-old demon in the shape of a nun. The other is a centuries-old demon that lives inside a doll. Both love nothing more than to torture, terrorize, manipulate, scare, and murder those of us unfortunate enough to be mortals. But what if they came to blows? What if, instead of using their powers to hurt us, they had to face each other? It's Annabelle versus the Nun. Who would win? Before we begin, make sure to hit that like button, subscribe to our channel, and click the notification bell for more amazing videos every day. That being said, let's begin. Huh? Hmm. Huh. Annabelle. In this episode, both our monsters are stars of the now legendary cinematic universe of horror, The Conjuring Verse. Launching back in 2014, The Conjuring Verse is based entirely on the real life case files of Ed and Lorraine Warren, a self taught Catholic demonologist and a trans medium, respectively, who came to be perhaps the world's best known and most infamous paranormal investigators. They're the pair responsible for the true story behind the Amityville horror, just to give you an idea of their rather infamous legacy. The Warrens' controversial misadventures into the supernatural spawned an incredible number of books the 18 current films in the Amityville franchise, and yes, the entire Conjuring universe, making their experiences perhaps the most influential of their contemporaries in the modern horror zeitgeist. It's two characters from this shared universe who will be going toe-to-toe -to -toe in this video, and up first is a doll so creepy she challenges Chucky from Child's Play and Babyface from Toy Story as the scariest children's toy committed to film, Annabelle. The Annabelle doll itself first appeared in the opening scene of The Conjuring. The Warrens' work with the Annabelle doll inspires the family in The Conjuring to hire the pair when some really nasty stuff goes down in their house, but otherwise, Annabelle doesn't have too much to do with The Conjuring. But this brief cameo was enough to send chills down the spines of audiences. She caught the public's imagination and was soon the star of her very own self-titled movie, a prequel exploring the history of the doll. That film unsettled audiences just as well as The Conjuring did, and so, not long after, yet another prequel, Annabelle Creation, was released, exploring the origin of the creepy doll. In just a few short years, the characters left a heck of a mark, so why? Uh, to quote the director of The Conjuring, James Wan, we knew we had something special when people would go out of their way to avoid Annabelle on set. She definitely gave off an inherently creepy vibe. When even the prop you're using in the real world is creeping people out, you know you're onto a winner. Like so many horror movie monsters, her backstory is one steeped in tragedy. In 1943, a doll maker named Samuel Mullins and his wife Esther lost their daughter Annabelle in an unfortunate car accident. Out of grief, the Mullins couple prayed to anything that could bring their daughter back. As a result, they unknowingly summoned a demon who masqueraded as B's spirit. The demon then requests permission to transfer its essence into one of Samuel's porcelain dolls in order to use it as a temporary vessel. Initially, the Mullins were overjoyed at the sight of their daughter, but they eventually realized that they had been deceived by a malevolent spirit that was searching for a human host. Soon after, Annabelle attacks Esther, gouging her left eye out. The Mullins couple then takes Annabelle and seals her inside B's closet, covering the walls in Bible pages, before reaching out to the church to bless the the household. Annabelle would remain dormant until 12 years later in 1957 when the Mullins couple opens their home to provide shelter for Sister Charlotte and the orphans of St. Eustace after the closing of their orphanage. When night falls, Janice, a young girl crippled by polio and one of the orphans, is awakened by a noise. She decides to investigate where the noise came from and discovers a note saying, find me. Janice sneaks into B's room, which has somehow been unlocked, despite Samuel's warning to not enter. Janice finds a key within a dollhouse and unlocks B's closet, unintentionally freeing Annabelle. Janice, creeped out by the doll, shuts the closet only for it to open again. Janice then closes the closet again, locking it this time, but B's closet opens again. She then throws a bedsheet over the doll, but Annabelle gets up from her chair and slowly approaches Janice as the bedsheet slips off, revealing nothing underneath. Janice looks out the windows and runs back to the room after seeing Samuel about to re-enter the house. Annabelle, now released from B's closet, begins terrorizing the girls throughout their stay at the Mullins farmhouse, primarily focusing on Janice. This was 
was only the beginning of her campaign of terror, as the doll now known as Annabelle would go on to haunt and terrorize many poor victims. Her powers include demonic possession, telekinesis, mind control, superhuman speed, and the ability to cast convincing illusions. Her goals seem to be pure sadism in design. All she wants is to terrorize whoever is foolish enough to cross her path. And though at first she started out as just a little bit creepy, as the franchise has progressed, she's grown ever more demonic and powerful. With the nun having similar powers, this fight could get interesting. Annabelle can also function as a beacon for other dark spirits, drawing them in like a boat to a lighthouse. The longer the doll is out of her confinement, the more of an army she's able to build. So yes, while Annabelle herself may be fragile, she is literally porcelain after all, and as a result may struggle against the nun, if she can hold out long enough that an army of spirits builds around her, she could be unstoppable. The Nun it seems to us that key to a victory for Annabelle is to use her poltergeist-like powers to distract the nun while she herself hides, slowly waiting for an army of dark spirits to build around her. We've also seen that the evil spirit contained within the Annabelle doll is capable of transferring into other people. We don't know the mechanics of monsters being able to possess other monsters, but maybe if Annabelle could just get a good grip on the nun, she could possess the nun, destroy herself, and then transfer back into the porcelain doll. It's one theory. But to better understand the possibilities of how this might go down, we need to better understand Annabelle's rival in the fight. While Annabelle may be one of the main antagonists in the Conjuring universe of films, the nun is arguably the main antagonist. Valak, to call her by her true name, made her debut in the franchise in The Conjuring 2 and went on to be the titular main villain of the 2018 spin-off, The Nun. The character is slated to return in both the upcoming The Nun 2 and the all-new Conjuring spin-off, The Crooked Man. First appearing in only 2016, she is quickly becoming one of the most ubiquitous female villains in current horror cinema. Her list of crimes looks like the rap sheet from hell. Slavery, torture, abuse, stalking, defilement, incrimination, destruction, kidnapping, fear-mongering, and mass murder. With the exception of tax evasion, there's pretty much nothing immoral she hasn't dabbled in. Though her motives are unclear, Vlock loves nothing more than tormenting families and possessing people charming, and it throws a spanner in the works of our idea that Annabelle could possess the nun. What if the nun possessed Annabelle? What if they possessed each other at the same time? To best understand Vlock's drive, let's explore who she, or rather it, is. Much like Annabelle, Vlock is based on a real-life case study by the Warrens, but the fictional take goes as follows. Centuries ago, a Romanian monastery was built by a duke who, against all common sense, attempted to summon demonic forces from the catacombs. He was killed by members of the Vatican who then sealed the rift with the blood of Christ. But hundreds of years later, during World War II, the raining bombs destroyed the evil spirit's prison, releasing it onto the world. This demon took the form of a nun as a means of blending in with the other nuns. This right here is a pretty nifty advantage Vlock has that Annabelle doesn't, blending in. Vlock could take many different forms in order to best steer the fight in her direction or even hide, but Annabelle can never hide. A walking evil doll is always gonna attract attention. Vlock, like most other demons, including Annabelle, seems to kill for fun. In 1952, she had slain almost all the nuns at the monastery, leaving only two survivors. If she had a dating profile, it would be intimidating, to say the least. Her interests don't include travel and gin. Her interests include driving her victims into committing suicide and murder and tormenting and killing everyone she can. And this deeply manipulative demon often succeeds. The real-life myth that Vlock is based on has, like almost all of the worst monsters in history, gone by many names. These include Yualak, Vlox, Valu, Valik, Volak, and Vlock with a C instead of a K. But perhaps her most daunting and telling name is the Great President of Hell. That nickname is important to understanding how this fight would go down. Annabelle is an evil, but the nun is the evil. This is Loki versus Thanos. This is the Mad Hatter versus the Joker or just one more demon versus the devil himself. The nun has Annabelle outranked, outpowered, out everything. 
So how do we see this fight going down? Well, right off the bat, the nun has the advantage, but there are some clever tactics Annabelle could pull out to get the upper hand, such as the aforementioned trick of hiding and using her beacon powers to lure in other dark demons to help her. But this comes with two big questions. Is Annabelle intellectual enough to think of that? She's been portrayed as animalistic, driven by impulse. Would such a creature plot or plan? And even if dark demons were drawn to her, who's to say they would work with her? Demons are chaotic creatures by design. Maybe once they were drawn into the fray, they would side with the nun. Or maybe they would fight against both Annabelle and the nun, turning what was once a one-on-one -on -one battle into a frenetic, demonic free-for-all. It's also worth noting that both Annabelle and Valak were capable of being imprisoned by biblical iconography and texts. Valak was contained in the Romanian monastery for hundreds of years, and Annabelle in the Mullen's home for 12 years. If Annabelle was clever about it, she could maybe lure the nun into a similar trap. Maybe she learned from what the Mullins did to her. Maybe while the demons she is drawn in with her beacon abilities fight the nun, Annabelle could prep a room lined with Bible pages to lure the nun into. To our minds, if this is a battle based purely on a physical showdown, the nun has it in the bag. But if Annabelle is clever about it, that little porcelain doll could surprise us. So who do you think would win this battle and why? Are you in the Annabelle team or the nun team? Let us know in the comments below. See you on the next battle.